Hi everybody, welcome to our worship at home. As you will have seen in the letter this week, we do hope to have Snaith Priory opened for worship on the 26th of July. Obviously not everybody will be able to or will want to come back to worship just yet, uh, but there is the opportunity there if you would like. Please could you register with us in advance if you are coming because we do have a limit on numbers and we would hate to have to turn anybody away at the door. If you're telephoning me please leave a message if I am not available at the time and I will confirm with you that you are on the list. Because we know that some people will not be able to return to church just yet, we will be continuing our online services. So this will be uh, happening for the forth uh, foreseeable future. During July and August, our senior staff team are recording sermons uh, for, for us to use uh, in our services. This week we will use the sermon that uh, Dr Christine Gore, who is the principal of St Peter's Learning uh, Centre, uh, who has provided us a reflection on the parable of the sower. As we come to God, we come in stillness and in readiness for the Spirit. The Lord be with you and also with you. We come from scattered lives to meet with God. Let us recognise his presence with us as God's people we have gathered. Let us worship him together. God our Father, we come to you in sorrow for our sins. As we say together, Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoings and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the Father forgive us by the death of his Son, and strengthen us to live in the power of the Spirit all our days. Amen. And the Collect for the fifth Sunday after Trinity. Almighty God, send down upon your church the riches of your spirits and kindle in all who minister the gospel your countless gifts of grace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And a reading from the Gospel of Matthew. The same day Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there, while the crowd stood on the beach, and he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed the seeds, some fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and that they sprang up quickly, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no roots, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil, and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone who has ears listen. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. That is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is 
the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, the person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the world and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruits and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, in another thirty. Let's imagine the scene. You are sowing wheat in one of the fields next to your family home. As you walk up and down, the years of practice mean that every handful of seed you scatter lands, more or less, on the soil you spent weeks preparing. Then suddenly the breeze off the lake increases. Your aim isn't so good now, and some of the precious seed lands at the edge of the field, on the path in the weeds, on the poor soil. You adjust your aim and pay a bit more attention to the task, but accepting that the birds will have a good lunch and come harvest time, the poor may have a few extra stalks for gleaning. Coming in from the task, your family are all buzzing. The teacher you've heard so much about is down on the beach. So you scoop up your lunch and head down towards the lake not wanting to miss the man who's been wowing the crowds, winding up the Pharisees and worrying his family with his antics. The crowd is so huge, the teacher has got into a boat anchored a short way from the shore. And as the crowd settles down to listen, he tells a story of a man sowing seed. And once more, you're back in your field, reliving your morning's labours. A farmer planted seed. As he scattered the seed, some of it fell on the road and the birds ate it. Some of it fell on the gravel and it sprouted up quickly but didn't put down roots. So when the sun came up, it withered just as quickly. Some fell in the, we the weeds. As it came up, it was strangled by the weeds. Some fell on good earth and produced a harvest beyond his wildest dreams. Are you listening to this? Really listening? You've been nodding as the story unfolds, then suddenly you're brought up short. What on earth did he mean by, are you listening, are you really listening? You look at your mother-in-law and she shrugs, none the wiser. So you tuck into your lunch, paying a bit more attention to what follows. When you get home that evening, you glance over to the field you'll be working in tomorrow. Once more, the story of the sower comes to mind, and you spend a moment mulling over what it might mean. Perhaps the familiarity of the task had sidetracked you. Maybe the thing you should be focusing on was the soil and not the sower. You yawn. Bedtime. There'll be plenty of time to think about that tomorrow when sowing the next field. Jesus was such a skillful teacher. He preferred not to deliver clever arguments or impart lots of information. Instead, he chose to engage people's imaginations and emotions by telling them stories, memorable stories that make connections with their everyday lives, but which also contained twists that got them asking questions and thinking about what they had heard. And as people mulled over their meaning, talked about it with others, gradually, at least for some, a new insight was gained. And because they worked so hard to fathom it out, it made much more of an impact than if Jesus had just told it to them straight. But remember, if you're feeling a bit inadequate for the task, take heart because even the disciples needed it explained to them sometimes. This parable is possibly very familiar to you and in being so, you may just find yourself nodding and not feeling particularly engaged. Perhaps you're focusing on the background behind me and wondering where it is. It's Lake Galilee. 
It's a parable I'd known since childhood when I was taken to Methodist Sunday School and where I later became a Sunday School teacher, despite not having much of a faith to speak of, and certainly nothing like the friends I had at school who had found Jesus. It really didn't connect with me until I was 21 and at university, when I had reached a crunch point and said to God, if you're really there and want me to follow you, show me. And it was then, sitting on the bed in my halls of residence, that a gospel reference popped into my head. And when I looked it up in my Bible, it was the parable of the sower. Well, being a scientist, I needed a bit more evidence and asked again. This time, a different gospel reference popped into my head. So I looked it up and yes, you guessed it, the parable of the sower again in a different gospel. So now the data was beginning to stack up and I knew I had to pay attention, to listen, to really listen. Throughout my life, many had sown the seeds of the gospel into my heart and it was now time for me to decide what sort of soil I was going to be, to say my yes to God's call to follow and be fruitful. I'm not sure it was a resounding yes, more like a well okay then, but as the gardeners amongst you all know, soil doesn't get improved overnight. It takes a lot of hard work and nourishing before it yields a harvest, and neither does the hard work stop. It's an ongoing process of digging, weeding and feeding. So what about you? Which bits of the parable might God be wanting to underline for you just now? What's your soil like? Is it stony? Shallow? Strangled by weeds? Was it once rich but is now a bit exhausted, only producing stunted growth? What might you do about it? And do you want to do anything about it? Maybe it's not your soil God wants you to think about, but your sowing. Do you hoard your seed? Sow it sparingly? Plant it in neat rows in only what you consider to be fertile soil? Or do you lavishly scatter it about, leaving it up to God and his grace to produce the harvest, taking the risk that it might be eaten by birds or fall onto stony ground? As a diocese, we've been encouraging one another to be renewed, released and rejuvenated. Renewed in our faith through reliance on the spirit in prayer and worship. Released into mission and to live as lights for Christ in our everyday lives. Rejuvenated by being fruitful, leading to new life and growth in our churches. It seems to me that the parable of the sower really strikes a chord for us at this time. So this week, why not find the space to mull it over a bit more? It might be helpful to imagine yourself in the story, as if hearing it for the first time, talking about it with others as you sit and listen by the lakeside. What new insights come to mind as you do that? Or try reading it slowly each day, savouring its words and praying through what God might particularly want to speak to you about. And if you don't already, daily use the diocesan prayer. Its words could have been written to sit alongside the parable of the sower. So I'm going to finish with us saying it together. I'll put the words up on the screen because you may not have memorised it. Living God, Jesus calls his followers to seek first your kingdom. Renew us as we make your love known. Release us to share freely together in mission and rejuvenate us to be fruitful in your service. Give us courage, wisdom and compassion that strengthened with the grace of the Holy Spirit we may, as the Diocese of Sheffield, both flourish and grow through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, 
from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. And so let us pray. Lord God, as we continue in this world that is so uncertain, we pray for your guidance as we start to unlock our churches, as we start to resume worship. We pray for all those who are eager to return, but also for those who are frightened and who are not able to return. Help us, Lord, to try to remember to be a community, to remember the feelings of each one of us, and to pray that you are with us at all times. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our government as they continue to lead us in this unknown crisis. But we also remember all around the world who do not have the facilities we have, who do not have the health care that is in existence here. We pray for all those people who are just beginning to experience this pandemic that they may find the help needed during this awful time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In many churches this week, Sea Sunday will be being celebrated and we do remember all our seafarers, those who are in the naval forces those who are fishermen and those who make their living by the sea. We know that you ministered on the Sea of Galilee and we ask that as you made yourself known through parables in this place, you make yourself known to others in those situations. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. And we do continue to pray for all those people who are ill at this time. Remembering Gordon, Jenny and John, Penny, Karen and Adrian, Mona, Cyril, Tracy, John, Carol, and Jim. Give them all hope in their time of trouble. And we ask you to envelop their families and their carers in your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we remember the souls of the faithful departed, those who have departed recently and those whose anniversaries fall at this time. When our time comes, Lord, Lord, grant us a place in your eternal kingdom with them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And so rejoicing in the fellowship of St. Lawrence, St. John the Baptist, St. Paul and all your saints, we commend ourselves to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. The love of the Lord Jesus draw you to himself. The power of the Lord Jesus strengthen you in his service. The joy of the Lord Jesus fill your hearts. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you now and always. Amen. So let's go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. So I do look forward to seeing some of you very soon and please be assured that if you are unable to as yet return to church we do completely understand and we will be holding you in our prayers. So take care everyone and see you soon. <laughs>